Fora TV. The world is thinking. The future is fundamentally fiction, right? It's fiction. The future is fiction. And depending on what genre of fiction you like to write, you can write a story for tomorrow. And it's quite fascinating to me. So therefore, you're never wrong and you're never quite right. If we look back at yesterday's visions of tomorrow, you'll see wonderful things. How many of you saw Blade Runner when it came out? Do you remember what year was Blade Runner presented to be? Anybody remember? 2026. 2026 is within a stone's throw now. And that was the far future when it was created. Absolutely the far future. So what I prefer not to do is talk about the fiction of tomorrow, but actually to try to think of what we call plausible futures. And so what I'd like to do is to share with you some of the thinking that we've been doing on, on what some plausible futures might look like for us. And I'm going to give you four worlds. And I want you to think, I'm going to give those four worlds, to, I'm going to have you to vote on which world you think we're going to head into first. Okay, so you're going to have to pay attention in a few minutes. And what we've done is we've juxtaposed two axes. One is human development, and the other is planetary health. Because it's interesting is we are on a planet that supports us. The oceans make our oxygen. We are on this planet. So what we need to really look at is HDI, which is a combination of three, three fundamental factors. One is essentially life expectancy, how well we're doing with giving birth. The second is, is, about, is about the health of a, of a population, of a group. The second is illiteracy. Is literacy, are we educating our population? And the third is about the standard of living or GDP. Most of the time, we just, most people just look at GDP, but the HDI is really the right thing to be looking at. So we go to be better or worse. The next is planetary health. And we chose that because planetary health, as I said, is a system which allows us to survive. And it's, a, it's built by a four or five factors. Species, which in the paper today, it was an article saying that one-third of the planetary species are under threat of extinction within the next 50 years. I just can't, can't quote. Biodiversity, pollution, abundance, and fertility. So this is really about the planet's carrying capacity. So if we juxtapose these, we get four different worlds. Oops. One is called the selfish bubble. The second, carbon is crime. The vortex of despair and the ecological age. So I'm going to describe each, each one of these. Now, each one of these is perfectly plausible. None of them are perfect. So when we're thinking about future scenarios, it's, it's fiction. So you have to go with each one of these. I want you just to, again, think about which one you think we're heading into first. All right? So the first one is what we call the selfish bubble. The selfish bubble is where the human system on the planet is in a very good state, right? But the planetary systems are not doing so well. It's a world in which we have continued growth. Growth is our mantra. Lots of urban growth, rural depopulation. We have generally environmental degradation. Because of our consumption of resources, we focus on ourselves, not on our environment around us. And we can get pretty good at that. Technology increases. We get really great fixes. Carbon sequestration might or might not work. Inflation starts to hit a little bit, but that's OK. But the ego is more important than the community. We build things, more and more things like this on the top right, the tallest tower in the world, the Burj, the lock. The emphasis in intellectually is on technology fixes, not societal fixes. Middle class commercialism booms. High levels of CO2 emissions. Our energy and water shortages continue to increase because it's, about, it's all about growth. It's all about consumption. OK? That's one. The second one is what we call the vortex of despair. In this world, fossil fuels are being used rampantly. We haven't figured out that those emissions are really worth trying to do something about. Mass migration becomes commonplace. Because the planetary systems are so unhealthy, you have like the herd mentality for survival. 
So you see people moving, and yet society as a whole, due to its lack of funds, does not really take care of the weak, the infirm, or the elderly. So you have increasing die-offs. Education takes a second rung. Global governance fundamentally breaks down, and so you have much more bartering, bilateral agreements, and resource grabbing. Right? It's a hard place to live. It's a very hard place to live. Social cohesiveness is more important than diversity. Your clan, your community, those who are like you are more important than the diversity of a healthy community. So it becomes really this fortress mentality. And I'm assuming everyone's reading while I'm talking as well. Are we doing okay with that? Yeah. All right. Carbon is crime. It's a third world. Here, governance has been strengthened. COP 15 is signed. COP 16 said we've got actually a whole series of agreements which are in place because there's a global recognition that we have to do something. Otherwise, our planetary systems which support us are going to implode and create a problem for us. So the human condition is less important than a planetary condition. So we put all of our effort, if you will, into saving planet Earth, spaceship Earth, and to the detriment of, of, of people, if you will, the plague. We're looked at as a plague on the planet. So we've got lots of um, emission-free technologies, lots of zoning and planning, densification. We have an extreme wealth gap between the rich and the poor. The rich are even further out than they are now. They gate themselves, they take care of themselves, and they really don't care about the rest. Right? It's, 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 a, it's a very strange place. You've got the eco-terrorists, you've got eco-warism. Cradle-to-cradle mentality, total life costing becomes mandatory, just like you have your food labels. Now we've got the, the resource labels on everything. The last world is the ecological age. The ecological age is one in which emissions have been stopped, if you will. Our, the growth in our greenhouse gases has stopped. It's decarbonizing. We're getting a little bit out. Circular economies, just as in the five-year plan, which was just uh, published from China, they're actually being practiced globally. There is no such thing as garbage. It's all resource. We've realized that we have to be living within our means, and there, but the means allow us to continue to live. Resource efficiency is expected. There's a, there's a new, you know, this is, this is what we all hope to get to, right? This is da 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 da, da. So it's a small world after. It's just, you know, this is right, that's where. So this is that ecological age, and it's probably, we can all kind of imagine what that might be. 